Hey guys, it's Liesl Jane. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some calorie hacks, how to count calories without going crazy. <laughs> okay, so this is one of my most requested videos. You guys always ask me to talk about my point system, what I call the point system, and we can call it Liesl Jane's point system, how, how to count calories without counting them. So that's what this is all about, and I'm really excited to share my point system with you. <laughs> don't have to obsessively count your calories because that is not fun. It is not fun for nobody and it's not, I don't think it's good for the mind. It really starts to mess with you and you literally feel like you're going crazy. At least from my experience and I know a lot of you guys feel the same. You guys already know that when I was trying to lose weight, the only thing that actually helped me after trying so many methods was being more mindful of my calories. But when I started counting calories, I counted every single calorie for a, that I ate for about a month and I felt like I was losing my mind. It was awful. I felt like it was completely consuming my life and I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? So I knew that I had to come up with a better approach. So I sat down and I was like, okay, what is, what is another way that I could do this? And I thought of so many different options. This was to me the easiest way to count calories without counting them. And this is what I've used. It's worked for me. I know a lot of you guys um, have enjoyed using this system as well. So this is from my book. Um, I've never actually talked about my book before on my YouTube channel. I do have an ebook set. It's like an actual book, but it's just not printed. It's in, it's a digital ebook download. Just a quick disclaimer, I'm not making this video to make book sales per se, but the point system plan is something that is found in part of my book, The Beautiful Body Guide, which is a paid ebook. However, you don't have to purchase my book to use this idea. I'm just going to be sharing it with you in this video, but it's not expensive at all. It's actually very affordable. I'm not going to be sharing the entire book with you today just a small part of it um, and a basic explanation of it, the point system. And if you want to see how it all works in the beautiful body guide, I will link that below, but you can still follow along without having it. Okay, before we get started, I do just want to say there's no magic secret to losing weight. Let's just get that out in the open. It basically comes down to calories consumed versus calories burned. That's basically what it comes down to. Um, so this is just my approach to counting calories without a without counting them but with that I try to eat as healthy as possible because then I feel better and I always I always say put health first health needs to come before weight loss because you don't want to be like starving yourself that's not healthy so we don't want to get the point of this video is so that we don't get obsessive about calories because we you don't have to be obsessive about calories to be mindful about them basically i just realized that i needed to become more mindful about what i was eating and control my portion and serving sizes so i found that with doing this point system i was just figuring out how much is how much of this do i actually need to be eating and i kind of decided that for a whole lot of types of foods and i came up with realistic portion sizes in the easiest, most simple way that I possibly could. You may be wondering, well, how is this any easier to any other point system out there? There are so many point system eating plans out there, right? I know, but I just found, and my mom and my sister found the exact same thing when we all tried to follow those kind of plans, that, you know, you'd sometimes get like 98 points to use in a day or something like that, and each point would be like 12 and a half calories. I'm not even kidding. We followed this one <laughs> where for one point you'd get one eighth of a banana. And so you needed eight points to eat one whole banana. It was literally worse than counting calories because how do you keep track of points like that? <laughs> how do you keep track of 98 points? I'm not I'm not trying to shade other plans and point systems. If they work for you, then that's awesome. But I was like, no, it was just as time consuming for me. I felt to keep track of like 98 points than it was to actually keep track of, you know, a whole lot of cal hundreds of calories. So I just decided, well, why not try to make each point worth roughly 100 calories? It was just this idea that I had one day after trying out a lot of different approaches to see what would be the easiest. And I thought, well, if each point is roughly 100 calories, then I'm getting a decent amount of food per point. Plus, I only have to keep track of a few points in a day. So if I needed 1,400 calories per day to lose weight, I'd get 14 points to use each day. If I needed 1,600 calories in a day, then I'd get 16 points for that day. And if I needed 1,200 calories in a day, then I'd get 12 points for that day. 
And even if that still sounds complicated to you, you can just break down your points like this. Say, for example, I'm having 1,400 calories a day to lose weight. I can easily have 400 calories or four points for each of my main meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then 200 calories or two points for my snack. And that is roughly 1,400 calories or 14 points for a whole day of eating for weight loss. So in my book, The Beautiful Body Guide, in the section where I talk about this point system, I break down the foods into groups to make it the whole thing easier to use. So I'm going to give you a few examples of 100 calorie serving sizes of foods in different food groups. It's very comprehensive and in detail in the book, but I will just give you an idea. And you can even make your own list of 100 calorie serving sizes of your favorite foods if you want to. I just found that while using my point system, what I call the point system, I learned so much about portion portion sizes and serving sizes and I had no clue before and that's why I gained so much weight. <laughs> I just didn't know how to eat. I didn't know how much to eat. I didn't know what to eat and so that's why I gained weight and I have learned with just learning about portion sizes and serving sizes and that's really what the point system is about. It's about trying to get us away from trying to count every single calorie and feeling like we're going crazy. It's it's trying to get us away from that and trying to get us to just learn about healthy portion sizes and healthy serving sizes. And even with continuing to maintain my weight, which I've maintained for a long time now after losing weight, I just found like I just have such a much better idea, such a much better idea of just how much I should be eating. When I did decide to start counting calories for a month, I, I literally listed everything I ate. So I was like, okay, I ate one apple, I ate two eggs, I ate five almonds. It was literally like that. And every time I ate something, I was like, okay, wait, how many calories was in that? Let me write down. And then I was like, okay, what did I eat today? And I kept on like going back to the list and it was just, it was just awful. It really, I don't recommend it not a great way it's not healthy for the mind for example before i used to write down every single calorie that i would eat that day like i would get way too specific and i had to keep going back to the list of foods that i'd eaten that day to check how many calories i still had left before i ate anything else i just wasted so much time and mental energy on counting calories and i found it so much simpler to round off the serving sizes of the foods that i ate the most often to 100 calorie portions and make that a point and to just know the serving sizes of all of my favorite foods. So I love banana peanut butter toast. So I could easily remember that one slice of toast was roughly 100 calories and one tablespoon of peanut butter was also roughly 100 calories and one medium banana was also about 100 calories. That was roughly 300 calories in total or three points and just really simple to keep track of. Or oh, here's another quick example. I love chicken avocado salad and I knew that about 60 grams of chicken was roughly 100 calories or one point. Then I could have two points worth of chicken if I wanted, so 200 calories. And I could have a third of an avocado, which was roughly 100 calories or one point. And I would still have 100 calories left to have a whole big salad for one point. I'll explain how to work out salad and vegetable calories in a moment. If your dressing or sauce contains more calories, then you would need to take that into account with your vegetable servings as some sauces and dressings are actually really high in calories, but things like fresh lemon juice, sea salt, and pepper are basically calorie free, so you can just use them as free items with this point system. A teaspoon of balsamic vinegar is only five calories, and a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar is only one calorie, so you can count them as free. If you're still feeling confused, don't worry, this was just a quick example. This is the simplest way that I found that I felt like I could do it. So basically what I decided to do was group my calories, everything that I ate into a 100 calorie serving size. So to start, here are some examples of carbs in 100 calorie servings that'll give you one point per serving. One third of a cup of dry rolled oats will give you roughly 100 calories or one point, and so will half a cup of cooked brown rice, half a cup of cooked quinoa, one eighth of a cup of unpopped popcorn kernels contains about 100 calories as well. And that one eighth of a cup of kernels makes about three cups of air popped popcorn. So three cups of air popped popcorn is only about 100 calories. The average slice of bread is also about 100 calories as well. Always a good idea to check the brand that you get though, as some brands do differ, but most of them are roughly 100 calories. And so is one medium-sized sweet potato. That is also about 100 calories, so one point for that as well. So all of those serving sizes would equal one point. 
Then here are some examples of foods that are rich in fats in 100 calorie servings. For 100 calories or one point, you can get 20 olives. <laughs> you can get two and a half teaspoons of oil. You can get one tablespoon of butter. Or you can get one third of a medium to large avocado or about half a small avocado. And just a few examples of foods rich in protein. For 100 calories, you can get either 80 grams of smoked salmon, about 60 grams of grilled skinless chicken breast meat, half a cup of cooked or canned black beans, one large egg, one scoop of protein powder, obviously depending on the brand as well, but many are roughly around 100 calories per scoop, and a quarter cup of hummus. So as a quick example, having one slice of toast for one point with a quarter cup of hummus for another point would give me a 200 calorie snack worth two points. And these are two foods that I like to eat a lot, so I'll remember the 100 calorie serving sizes for each of them, and then I can have them as go-to items in my kitchen. Arugula is so low in calories that I'm not even going to count it. It's a free item. Woo! Free. So I just like to have that with my hummus and toast. It's really yummy. A few examples of foods that are rich in fats as well as protein. I'm just going to show you a few. And 100 calorie serving sizes include 1 tablespoon of peanut butter, 14 raw almonds, 5 teaspoons of chia seeds, 2 tablespoons of sunflower seeds, 2 thirds of a cup of full cream plain yogurt, and 25 grams of dairy cheddar cheese. All of those serving sizes will be 100 calories or one point as well. So here's a fun, healthy snack that I love to have for two points. It's only 200 calories, guys. I take one eighth of a cup of popcorn kernels, like I showed you, and make a huge bowl of air pop popcorn, about three cups, using my air popper. And that's 100 calories or one point. It's such a lot of popcorn for such a little bit of calories. And then I add 14 raw almonds to that for another 100 calories or another point and some sea salt which is free obviously and that's a really yummy healthy snack for only two points or roughly 200 calories. If you were wondering about fruits 100 calories will give you one medium sized banana, one small to medium sized grapefruit, one medium to large apple, about one cup of mango pieces, one and a half cups of raspberries, one and one third of a cup of blueberries and one and a half cups of grapes. So one slice of toast with a tablespoon of almond butter plus one medium to large apple on the side will give you three points or about 300 calories. There are so many vegetables that are super low in calories and in some cases you can even count them as free. Cucumber, bell pepper, tomatoes, snap peas, asparagus, carrots, broccoli, cauliflower. What I like to do with one point or 100 calories with vegetables is to choose three low calorie vegetables and have a nice big serving of vegetables. So here's how I sometimes do it. Here I'm having a 200 calorie hummus and vegetable snack. I have chosen three low calorie vegetables, 100 grams of red bell pepper slices, two cups of cucumber slices, and a cup of cherry tomatoes as well. And together those three vegetable servings will be roughly 100 calories. So that's one point. And I've measured out a quarter cup of hummus for another 100 calories or another point. So together I have a snack for two points. Sometimes though, I just count vegetables as free because they really are super low in calories. For example, here I have one slice of toast for one point with one tablespoon of tahini, also for one point. And then on top of that, I'm just adding a few slices of tomato and also a tiny little bit of baby spinach. And this basically, the, the tomato and the spinach really just adds no calories at all basically so it's not like a whole plate of vegetables and so I'm just going to count them as free in this example. Of course if you use a lot of oil or sauce or something like that in the vegetables then you're going to need to take that into account but you don't have to use high calorie items to cook your vegetables and there are certain items that you can have for free that add a lot of flavor to meals. Things like lemon and lime you can count as free, onion and garlic, and sweetened balsamic vinegar or apple cider vinegar, a little bit of pure tomato paste, natural herbs and spices. There are so many natural herbs and spices that are basically calorie free. And then cinnamon and also unsweetened vanilla extract or ground vanilla powder. And of course, leafy greens like spinach, arugula, romaine, lettuce, and other leafy greens. They're so low in calories, really you don't need to count them. Okay, it is just important for me to say as well, it's the recommended safe way to lose weight is to not lose more than one or two pounds per week. So I know when you want to start to lose weight, you're like, 
okay, how can I lose as much weight <laughs> as possible in a short amount of time? And that's not really the healthiest thing to do. You do kind of want to lose weight a little bit slower so that it's sustainable, so that you can keep going with it. Um, that's going to help your, your skin to like shrink back to that tighten and shrink back with your body too. So that's a plus. And just if you try to lose weight too fast and you starve yourself, it's just, it's not very sustainable and it's just not really healthy. It's not healthy. I really want to show you guys how easy this point system can be to use and also how versatile it can be. So I'm going to show you two different examples here of meal ideas that I'm going to create using the point system. But then I'm going to be doing some food item swaps so that you can see how easy it can be to change the whole plan up to use the foods that you like to eat the most often. So here I have four points worth of food, roughly 400 calories. I have two slices of whole grain toast. Each slice is roughly 100 calories, so one point per slice, which equals two points for two slices. Then I have 60 grams of grilled skinless chicken breast meat, about 100 calories, which is one point. And then one third of a medium to large avocado, another 100 calories, so another point. Then the salad is just a few leafy greens and lettuce really, no dressing, no sauce, so I'm counting it as free, so that's four points in total. Then to show you how easy it is to swap out foods, I've kept the free salad, and I've also kept the one third of an avocado for one point, but I've switched out the two slices of toast, which were two points, for two large boiled eggs, which will also be about two points or roughly 200 calories. And I've switched out the 60 grams of grilled chicken, which was one point, for half a cup of cooked quinoa, which is also one point, roughly 100 calories. So in total, both options are using four points, but they have different food items. For the chicken avocado toast one, I added some lemon juice, sea salt, and black pepper to the salad, free items as well, as you remember. And then I smashed the avocado onto one slice of toast and added the chicken on top of that. So it was a nice, healthy filling sandwich with a little free side salad. And for the quinoa egg and avocado one, I added all of the items to my plate, added some lemon, some sea salt, and some black pepper for flavor. And then I just had a nice simple meal like that. Of course, you can chop up everything and toss it and you can add more herbs and spices if you like for more flavor. Then here's a breakfast example for you guys. You guys know that I love my oatmeal for breakfast. So I'm going to show you how you can make it following the point system. Here I have one third of a cup of dry rolled oats. Again, this is a hundred calorie serving, which is one point, with one tablespoon of unsweetened peanut butter, which is also one point, and one cup of mango pieces, which is also one point. So that is only three points in total, which I'll be using to make a yummy, healthy filling breakfast. Then doing a slight food swap, I'm keeping the one tablespoon of peanut butter for one point and I'm also keeping the one cup of mango pieces for another point but I've taken out the one third of a cup of dry rolled oats which was one point and I've replaced that with two thirds of a cup of full cream plain yogurt which is also roughly 100 calories so the same one point. So this is also only three points in total and I'll be using these three ingredients to make a yummy peanut butter mango smoothie. So for the oat, mango and peanut butter breakfast, I'm adding the one third of a cup of dry rolled oats to a pot with one cup of water. Um, I just bring that to a boil on the stove and then let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then I have a hundred calorie serving of cooked oatmeal. I'm adding some cinnamon, which is a free item, remember, for extra flavor and nutrients. And I'm just serving that in a bowl and topping the cooked oats with the one cup of mango pieces and also the one tablespoon of peanut butter. So in total, I have a nice filling 300 calorie breakfast for only three points and the mango does sweeten up the whole thing really nicely so I haven't added any sweetener to this one but remember that you can add a low calorie healthy sweetener like stevia or erythritol for free. For the yogurt, mango and peanut butter one, I'm simply adding the one cup of mango pieces to my Nutribullet with the one tablespoon of peanut butter and also the two thirds of a cup of full cream yogurt. So with that, I'm adding some ice cubes to make it chilled and also about a quarter cup of water to blend. And after blending, that's a nice healthy 300 calorie smoothie for only three points. Really simple and easy to make and it's also really refreshing. And there are so many other kinds of breakfasts you can make with the point system too. If you have a sweet tooth, <laughs> why not try snacking on some low calorie fruit instead of candy or chocolate? Um, you can do this between meals or after meals. Fruits like berries, grapes, melon, they're very low in calories and they're also full of nutrients. If I'm craving something sweet after a meal, then I'll have a little handful of fresh berries or a few grapes or a few pieces of melon. 
And if you just have a really small serving, then you can count it as free. Or what you can do is save all of your fruit points for that day, all the points you'll be using for fruit, for sweet snacking after meals. I do that sometimes too. As for sweeteners and sugars, I would say try to stay away from refined sugars as much as possible, as the more sugars you eat, the more you crave sugars. It really can become like this vicious cycle where you just crave sugar all the time when you're eating it all the time. And it really is just a case of retraining your taste buds to like foods that are not overloaded with sugar because so many foods today are overloaded with sugar. But keep in mind that there are healthier sweeteners out there that you can try. Stevia and erythritol basically contain no calories, so they are free sweeteners. You can have them for free. Woo! I mean, you can probably have a teaspoon of sweetener in your morning cup of coffee for free, but just remember that if you keep having a spoonful here and a spoonful there, then all of those calories, they will eventually start to add up. So if you do feel like you need to drink a lot of sweeteners, maybe try erythritol or stevia. If you do like the taste, I prefer erythritol. And the same goes with milks, um, if you're going to keep adding them to your teas and coffees. For one point, you can get one and two thirds of a cup of unsweetened almond milk, so that will be 100 calories. Or you can get one and one third of a cup of dairy skim milk, and you can get two thirds of a cup of full cream dairy milk for one point or 100 calories. So just keep that in mind if you keep having a cup of coffee or tea with milk and sweeteners, all of those calories, they will start to add up. So I know that I love having smoked salmon and avocado on whole rye toast. So if I have two slices of toast of roughly 100 calories each, that's two points, plus one third of an avocado for one point, plus 80 grams of smoked salmon for another point, then I'll have a four point meal for lunch or for 400 calories. And I'll just add some sea salt, pepper, lemon juice, and a little bit of fresh arugula to that as well, which are all free items. So I can just get to know that, the serving sizes for the toast, the avocado, and the salmon. And then I know that that's a nice healthy lunch with four points. Or something I really love, a big salad with quinoa, black beans, and avocado. So I really love this. So I know by heart that half a cup of black beans is one point, and so is half a cup of cooked quinoa. And by now you all know one third of an avocado is one point. Mix that up with 100 calories of veggies. So here I've chosen my three veggies to make one point or 100 calories worth of veggies. And there I have a nice big hearty filling salad for four points. And throw on some apple cider vinegar for free, some lemon juice, some sea salt, black pepper. You know, mix that all up and have it as the dressing. And I'm just super happy. What you can also do is use half points for some of the food items if you want to. For example, I love adding chia seeds to my overnight oats. So what I'll do is make overnight chia oats with half a cup of dry rolled oats, which will be roughly 150 calories or one and a half points, and two teaspoons of chia seeds, which will round off to roughly 50 calories or half a point. And I'll top that off with one tablespoon of almond butter for one point. And I'll add about three quarters of a cup of mixed berries for roughly half a point as well. And that's an easy breakfast that I love to have for three and a half points or roughly 350 calories. But most of the time I just use whole points. There are some times when I use half a point, but most of the time I'm just keeping my points whole to make it easier to calculate the day of eating. My biggest advice is to measure everything until you know by heart what a serving size is. Use measuring spoons and measuring cups to get to know accurate serving sizes, or you can even use a food scale. And when you get to know the correct serving sizes or portion sizes for your favorite foods by heart, then you'll know them. So you can begin to estimate your foods because you already know what the correct portion sizes look like. Whereas you may have not known before, you started practicing measuring them. It's kind of just like practicing serving yourself realistic portion sizes. You don't need to be super obsessive about it, but also try not to get into the habit of becoming an overestimator of everything. <laughs> uh, yeah. It definitely gets easier though, so don't get stressed out about this new approach if it's something that you'd like to try for yourself. Just get to know the 100 calorie serving sizes of the foods that you like to eat most often on a daily basis and start from there. I personally find it's easiest to build meals that are between 300 to 500 calories, so between 3 to 5 points for a meal, and then have snacks that are between 200 and 300 calories, or 2 to 3 points. Whatever suits the way that you like to eat, how many meals you prefer to have in a day, and also how many calories you need in a day to lose weight in a healthy way. 
This approach to keeping track of calories is really versatile and that's what I love so much about it. You can really easily make it gluten-free, dairy-free, refined sugar-free, plant-based, vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, or as healthy as you want. It's really up to you, for example, if you wanna choose a gluten-free or a whole grain bread, or if you wanna eat vegan cheese instead of dairy cheese if you want to be dairy free but just remember that if you make healthier food choices by choosing foods in their whole form instead of processed foods and trying to make sure that you're getting all of the main food groups you'll probably feel a lot better you'll have better sustained energy and you'll probably feel fuller for longer and it's actually it's really not actually that hard i often grab one medium sized banana and about a tablespoon of peanut butter and I know that that's a healthy 200 calorie snack. And I'll slice the banana up and eat it with the peanut butter using a spoon. It's really simple and yummy. And don't worry, if you're used to working in kilojoules instead of calories, then all you need to know is that one calorie is equal to 4.18 kilojoules. Therefore, one point is 418 kilojoules. You may be wondering about now, well, how do I make sure that I'm getting enough healthy fats and protein and carbs and fiber in my diet? So in my book, I do give lots of examples of how you can break down your daily points to make sure that you're getting all of the food groups. But I think a great start is if you try to add some healthy fats, some protein and some whole carbs to each meal. And if you do make the decision to eat whole carbs instead of processed carbs and you're eating vegetables and fruit, then you're probably getting enough fiber. Here you can see that two eggs would give me two points of protein, one third of an avocado would give me one point of healthy fats, and one small to medium sized grapefruit would give me one point of carbs. And then the avocado and the grapefruit would both give me some fiber because I've chosen to eat whole foods. And over here you can see that 120 grams of grilled chicken would give me two points of protein, one third of an avocado would give me one point of healthy fats, and then a whole lot of veggies, three veggie portions would give me one point of carbs or veggies, which would also give me fiber. So those are just some really quick examples of some healthy balanced meals that could give you all of the food groups using the point system. But just to conclude, I really do find that the easiest way to use this point system is to have three meals per day of roughly 400 calories each, so four points per meal. Plus, if you have snacks, then having one or two 200 calorie snacks, so making each snack two points. This point system, it's not 100% accurate. Some things are 105 calories and for, those, for the point, and some of them actually work out to be like 95 calories. But at the end of the day, I find that it sort of just evens itself out and some things that you're gonna eat are slightly more, some of them are slightly less. It's just gonna like even itself out and it's just, the point is not to obsessively count anyway. So it's just gonna be rough estimation, but those, they're pretty close. They're as close as I could get them to eat in a re realistic serving size. Honestly, what's so great about it is that I lost weight so much easier doing it this way with just doing like the estimations of 100 calories per point than I, way easier than I ever did with trying to count every single calorie exactly. And obviously I don't want you guys to feel overwhelmed now, like you have to learn all these amounts of calories. All you need to do is know the calorie serving sizes of all of your favorite foods doesn't have to be that complicated and you don't have to learn the serving sizes of everything. You'll get to know them. Calm down. It's okay. Just be relaxed about it. And I think that if you if you just decide, if you do one of the meals that I showed you today, you can get a couple of ideas from that or you can build your own meals using the point system. Get to know three breakfast recipe options, three lunches and three dinners and three snacks and just get to learn those. And then you don't have to think about it so much. You're like, okay, cool, that's 400 calories. I know that I'm getting four points, 400 calories at the breakfast, and I'm doing the same for lunch and dinner, and then I'm having a two, and then I'm having a 200 calorie snack. That is how I did it, and that is what I found the easiest thing for me to lose weight. And I know a lot of you guys have enjoyed using my point system in my books as well. I've also got a whole lot of free downloads on my blog, including a three a free three day eating plan for weight loss. Those all those free downloads will also be linked below. You can go download them and check them out if you want to. Um, yeah, that's about it. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I do just want to say health, let's put health first. 
healthy is the new skinny as they say healthy is the new skinny and let's just focus on being healthy before we focus on losing weight you don't need to be obsessive about it and i think it's always a good idea to put your health of your body first so you may also be wondering well how how, may, how am i supposed to know how many calories i need to eat in a day to lose weight tell me tell me tell me so i <laughs> i'm gonna be making a video about that soon so stay tuned for that but for now you can just google it you can use a fitness app to just figure out how how many calories you need in a day to lose weight there's lots of apps out there where you can just you know type in your your age your gender your activity level um your height your weight, your age, you know, all those things, and it'll tell you a rough estimation of how many calories you need to eat in a day to lose weight. But I will be making a video about that soon. But that is it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it, and I really hope that you found it helpful in some way. I hope that it can help you to lose weight, and I hope that it can help you to kind of be more mindful of your calories if that's something you want to look at without being obsessive about it. That is my that is the idea behind it, so I really hope that it can help you if you have struggled with being obsessive with calories in the past. But give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Don't forget to turn on the little notification bell to get notified when I upload. And I'll see you guys again very soon.